Ladies and gentles, Mary, here as part of the Maryland Renaissance Festival Street Spear Project, this, if you are following along with your bingo cards, is Macbeth, Act 1, Scene 7. Macbeth has been told the prophecy by the weird sisters. Macbeth has told his lady wife, and as always in any marriage or partnership, a discussion is to be had. <laughs> If it were done when tis done, then twere well it were done quickly. If the assassination could trammel up the consequence and catch with his Circe's success, that but this blow might be the be-all and the end-all here, but here on this bank and shoal of time, we jump the light to come. But in these cases we still have judgment that we but teach bloody instructions which, being taught, return to plague the inventor. This even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poison chalice to our own lips. He's here in double trust. First, as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed, then as his host, who should against his murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan hath borne his faculties so meek, hath been so clear in his great office, that his virtues shall plead like angels, trumpets tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off, and pity, like a naked newborn babe striding the blast, or heaven's cherubim paused upon the sightless couriers of the air, shall blow the horrid deed in every eye, that tears shall drown the wind. I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition, which all leaps itself and falls on the other. <laughs> oh no, what news? He has almost supped. Why have you left the chamber? Have he asked for me? No, you're not, he has. We will proceed no further in this business. He hath honoured me of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people, which would be worn now in their newest gloss, not cast aside so soon. Was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? Hath it slept since? And wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely? From the times that I have cut thy love, art thou afeard to be the same in thine own acts and valour as thou art in desire? Would thou have that which thou esteemst the ornament of life? And live a coward in thine own esteem, letting I dare not wait upon I would? Like the poor cat in the alley. Prithee, peace. I dare do all that may be called become a man. Who dares do more is not. No, what beast was it then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you darst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more the man. Nor time, nor place did then adhere, and yet you would make both. They have made themselves, and that their fitness now has unmake you. I have given suck, and know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. I would. Smiling in my face, I plucked my nipple from his boneless gums and dashed the brakes out, and I so sworn as you have done to this. If we should fail, oh, we fail. Screw your courage to the sticking place, it will not fail. When Duncan is asleep, where to the rubbish on his day's hard journey, soundly invite him. His two chamberlains lie with wine and wassail so convinced that memory, the warder of the brain, shall be a few. The receipt of reason of Limbeck only. When in swinish sleep the drenched nature's lie is in the death. What cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? What not put upon his spongy officers so shall bear the guilt of our great quell? Bring forth men children only. For thy undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. 
Will it not be received when we have marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chamber and use their very daggers that they have done? Who dares receive a tother, as we shall make our griefs and clamour roar upon his death? I am settled, and bend up each corporal agent to this terrible feat. Away, and mock the time with fairest show. False face must hide what the false heart doth know. Thank <laughs> you.